Hi, I'm Bill Ohms. Today I'm going to talk about some advanced features I've added to the Rose Engine Surface Simulator software. Everything that I do has been simulated in advance to make sure I get precise cuts. Today we're going to talk about some of the advanced features I've added. In the advanced Surface Simulator software, there's a lot more options on the cutter. Down in the bottom right hand corner of the window, for example, you can select a different kind of cutting frames. Horizontal cutting frame is in the basic uh, version. Now you have a universal cutting frame, a drill, and an eccentric cutter. You also have a variety of different cutting profiles. Normally you'd want to use an ideal cutter. Uh, it's the fastest in rendering, but for some applications you'll want to define the shape very precisely. For example, a 60 degree point, a round, a concave, or a flat cutter. Additionally, you'll have a few other parameters that come into play for universal cutter. Uh, for example, the angle. Uh, this is the angle of the um, cutter relative to the uh, bed of the lathe. Zero degrees means that you're cutting into the end uh, of a piece of work, sort of like you would do on the top of a dome. If you change this, for example, to 90 degrees, that would be swinging the cutter all the way around in front of the work, such as you would be doing in decorating uh, the side of a box, or even a minus 90 degrees, which would be if the cutter is coming from the back of the work. In addition to that, you have the rotation of the cutter on its axis. Zero means it's horizontal or flat. Uh, then you can start uh, rotating it counterclockwise is a positive angle as you're looking at the wood. Uh, and then uh, all the way up to 90 degrees, for example, would be straight up and down or a vertical cutter. So let's start with a simple example of a, uh, a bamboo pattern cut on the side of a cylinder. I've got a vertical line for the outline, which gives me just a simple cylindrical shape. Uh, and I'm going to be cutting with a, a universal cutting frame on the front. So I've rotated 90 degrees on the UCF angle to indicate it's coming from the front of the work and 90 degree rotation clock, counterclockwise on the axis, which means I'm cutting up and down. Uh, you can see I've spaced some cuts. The spacing of the cuts matches my cutter diameter. The diameter of this cutter tip is uh, 3 16 of an inch, 0 0.1875. Uh, then when I hit the render button, you can see that I have the bamboo pattern. Uh, each of the cuts I phase by 180 degrees to get the alternating effect. You can also uh, use different phasing to get spiraling effects and so forth. Now if I change the cutter to a flat cutter rather than a concave cutter and keep all the other parameters the same, uh, including the spacing of the cuts and so forth, then we'll end up with a classic basket weave pattern. And again, you can change the phasing to get spiraling effects and so forth. Now, a lot of times it's useful to have the cutter at something other than straight up or straight down. Sometimes you want it at an angle, such as making a classic rope pattern. Here I'm uh, making individual cuts using a flower rosette. I'm stepping each uh, cut over by 50 thousandths of an inch and increasing the phase by 90 degrees each time or a quarter of the rotation, uh, a quarter of the period. And I'm using a 60 degree point and I've set the uh, rotation of the cutter to 33.2 degrees clockwise. The negative sign means a clockwise rotation. Uh, still the cutter's coming from the front of the work, 90 degrees in front, uh, and making the cuts uh, every 50 thousandths of an inch, and you can see the effect that that has with the rope pattern. Now in practice, you'd probably uh, space your cuts a little closer together so you won't have that rippling effect on there. Another way to get the same rope effect is uh, to use a spiraling effect. Here I'm uh, using a spiral uh, cut point, uh, just indicating the start and stop position of the spiral and indicating that I want it to go 90 degrees around the shape. Uh, again, I'm using the universal cutter from the front, 90 degrees rotated toward the front of the lathe, rotated clockwise 38.1 degrees using a 60 degree point. And you can see here, here's the resulting uh, cut that I would get uh, by using the spiraling effect. Now let's do another kind of spiral, but uh, instead of using a horizontal cutting frame, I'm, I'm going to use a drill. And uh, it's going to be a sixteenth of an inch end mill. So the end of it is flat. So it's a 0 0.0625 diameter, flat. And I'm going to use a single S-curve. And we can see that uh, uh, 
uh, uh, before we render it, I've just got black lines indicating approximately where the spiral will be. And then when I render it, we can see the actual impressions that the cutter will make and the actual width and spacing of the cuts. Uh, this would be pierced all the way through, uh, although we can't see through this with particular 3D implementation, you get an idea of what it would look like pierced. You can add a lot of cut points. Uh, in this case, I'm uh, adding a lot of vertical lines, individual spirals, uh, and cut them out into a very interesting pattern on the side of a box that will be pierced all the way through. Uh, exact details in making this will be coming up in an issue of American Woodturner magazine. Uh, I think it's the April issue, unless they get bounced to the next one, uh, having a lot of details on exactly how to make this kind of a pattern in, in a box. An eccentric cutting frame is useful for making a lot of patterns, in particular barley corn patterns. Here I'm going to be making a barley corn pattern on the side of a cylinder uh, by using eccentric cutting frame. Uh, a 60 degree pointed cutter. The diameter of the cutter is 3 16 of an inch. The radius of the cutter means how uh, wide of a circle the cutter inscribes. Uh, I'm doing it on the edge of a bowl so or edge of a cylinder. So I'm 90 degrees, which means I'm approaching the uh, shape from the front of the lathe. Uh, before I hit the render, you can see here we have uh, uh, guideline circles. Uh, to line these up and help design your part, you can simply put your cursor in the cut radius window and then use the scroll wheel to change that value. And in the 3D view, you can see uh, the circles getting slightly bigger, slightly smaller. Well, you'll want to choose a value where the circles just barely touch that gives you the nicest uh, kind of a barley corn patterns. Uh, so I'll go back and revert to what I had saved and then hit the render button. And you can see some very nice barley corn effects here on the side of a uh, piece of work. Now, if I want to cut barley corn patterns on the top of a box, for example, then I get my eccentric cutting frame back to angle zero, which means it's cutting in the top. The uh, axis of the cutter is aligned with the uh, bed of the lathe, still using the 60 degree point. And you can see uh, I've got the guide marks there. And when I hit the render button, uh, we'll see the 3D representation of the barley corns on the surface. And of course you can add as many of these as you want. I only added one on here, but you can have multiple ones, uh, as many as you want. In addition to adding a number of different cutters in the modeling on the advanced version, have the ability to convert spirals into a series of cuts that will add facets uh, in the uh, path of the spiral. For example, here I have a simple spiral pattern on the outline of an onion dome shape, a 90 degree twist from the bottom to the top. And I select the macros spiral to cut points. In this case, I only have one cut point. If I had others, I would be able to select which one. The total length of the spiral is 3.1 inches. If I were to t measure that with a tape measure, I'm going to add cut points every two tenths of an inch that will insert 15 additional points. Uh, uniform D means I want a uniform distance. You can also select uniform in the X direction or uniform in the vertical direction. I'm going to select uniform D along the distance of the spiral. You hit OK and notice that it's added a number of points along the curve for me. Uh, now when I render the detail, you can see individual cuts and facets that will give me the same spiraling effect. For more information on the advanced features in this software, see my website, software.billohms.com. Thank you.